is mighty sweet. Liberty sows its seed at Farm Point Farms. Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Farms here in the mountains of North Carolina. Tonight I've got something that is a passion of mine, something I want to talk to you about that has just like been a hobby of mine since 1999. I think it was maybe late 98. And that is what I like to say is pirate radio stations. Um, the truth is they're, they're, they go under a bunch of names. You might hear them called pirate stations, even if they're not genuinely pirate radio stations like my own. You might hear them referred to as micro broadcasters. I like the phrase community radio, community broadcasting. And then there's also um, the official term, which is part 15, part 15 transmissions, part 15 radio stations. That's what we're going to be dealing with. These are low power AM and low power FM transmitters and radio stations that you can set up in your community. Now, if you live in a subdivision of, say, a thousand homes and you set one of these radio stations up, you are going to blanket 1,000 ears, right? You're going to get the whole neighborhood and you're going to get that with one little radio station. So when people think about low power AM and low power FM, these part 15 stations that are really, really low power, they think, ah, yeah, that's going to be useless. But when you're talking about um, the density of most people live in now, you can actually reach quite a broad audience with one of these things. And they're awesome, dude. They're awesome. Who doesn't like local news? Who doesn't like community news? Who doesn't like to know what's going on in their area? And so I, since 1999, have run a Hamilton Rangemaster. And here's a picture of it right here. All right, they're a really nice AM transmitter. You can get it set to any frequency. You just order it, you know, with whatever frequency you want. But there are a ton of other ones. The most inexpensive way to get into AM transmissions, AM Part 15 broadcasting, is to pick up one of these, and that is called a Talking House. Yeah, and these things have been around forever. I think they're on the fifth or sixth revision now. But these are a Part 15 legal thing, and of course, with a little bit of tinkering, hook up a, a, a longer antenna, do a little bit of tuning, and you have got yourself a AM station that can conservatively work a mile some people can easily get two miles. My station here, I get about a mile and a half to two miles, depending on which side from the house. You know, I've got mountains around me. Now, if you had like a really good uh, a mid-wave antenna, an amplified antenna, you could probably pull my signal in at three miles out, which is just incredible for one-tenth of a watt. And when we're talking about Part 15 legal radio stations, we're talking about some pretty low power stations here. On the AM side, it is 100 milliwatts, which is one-tenth of a watt, so not a lot of juice. But... That's part of what makes radio stations of this type kind of fun, for me anyway, is squeezing that extra 100 feet out of, uh, out of those transmissions, right? Let me turn that down a little bit, GMRS action. So anyway, that's the AM side. On the FM side, a lot has changed in the last five years. You've seen on this channel, I did a review of the Redicus TR502, which I have another one of right here. I liked it. My friends liked his so much, I went ahead and picked one of those up. Then we did a TR, I think it was 508, which is an FCC legal Part 15 style transmitter. Gave that one away. And guess what? In a week or two, we're going to be giving away another one. This one is uh, a totally different brand. And we're going to do a review of it. I'm going to do another giveaway. This thing's a powerhouse, though. This thing, you can run it at FCC legal regulation wattages or voltage. I'm sorry, yeah, wattages. Or you can jack this thing up to uh, 15 watts, I think it, it is. So stick around for that. So one of you, if you're interested in uh, having your own community radio station, will get it for free. So that's, uh, that's from me. Anyway, on the AM side, there's also these things. And I've got one here. This is, this is actually my original radio station here. Uh, this is a Ramsey AM1, and this one I put the, in the case here. But this is a this is a kit that you could put together. The AM1 was a very primitive kit, but it was tunable. The problem with this one is it would drift, so you would lock it into a station. And if you had an analog receiver on the other end, this was not a problem. But most receivers are digital, so that ain't going to happen. So this is just kind of a historical piece, but they do still make it. If you go on eBay, you can see there's a guy in, uh, I think it's Greece or Turkey, who currently makes a wide spectrum of AM transmitters, ones that are totally FCC legal at the Part 15 level, and then ones that go all the way up to like 3 or 5 or 10 watts, I can't remember. But they're out there, so the thing to remember about AM is you're going to put a lot more effort into getting a good quality signal and a good sounding setup. The Hamilton Rangemaster is a really great uh, transmitter that I have repaired recently, but 
even with it, you still have a lot of work to get it just right. You're going to put your antenna in just the right place. You're going to make sure you have ground plane and you're going to just take some tweaking and moving around in order to make it work right. Again, with an FM transmitter, kind of like this Reticus here, mm, it's a whole lot more. This has a built-in SWR meter. This one has adjustable power. This one has a lot of modern features like USB in and uh, control. You can actually control this thing from, um, from your laptop. This thing also has a mic in and a line in on the front, so it's, it's really a pretty cool solution. And that's why in the last five years, FM uh, transmissions have taken off and AM has kind of trickled down. So when I got started in this industry in 1999, uh, if you wanted an FM transmitter, you were probably looking at spending four or five times more on that than you would on an AM one. And now it's getting to be the opposite. You can get a really nice, high quality, high featured FM transmitter for a hundred bucks, 120 bucks. And on the AM side, you're gonna spend six or $700 for a real high end one. Again, I don't want to scare you off of that number because, again, those talking house transmitters are all over the place on eBay used for 50, 60 bucks. So it becomes, mm, you know, not too bad. Antenna wise, an FM community radio station is going to be a lot easier to set up. It uses just a, a J pole or, um, or just a stand up uh, dipole antenna, and you just adjust the height for for the signal that you want. You also have the ability to build your own antenna and it's relatively small size antenna to get a relatively good amount of gain. AM antennas, due to the part 15 rules, you're limited to an antenna height of nine feet. That's not a lot of, or, or 10 feet, I'm sorry, and that's not a lot of uh, a lot of height when you're talking AM, which is a much longer uh, wavelength. So you're gonna have to get real creative to fit inside of the confines of the part 15 rules. But back to just community radio, micro broadcasting, pirate radio, whatever you want to call it, why would you want to do that? And the answer is so obvious. I mean, don't you want to get into a community where everyone is kept informed of things that are going on in the community? My father lives down in a retirement community in Georgia, and they recently had some vandalism. Something went in, and this is a kind of an encapsulated place. This place has a gate. You know, it's pretty fancy, and uh, and you go down into it, and there's only one way in and one way out of this place. So if the fact that the people got in and vandalized the whole neighborhood, it was a pretty big deal. How do you how do you communicate that to people? Word of mouth, sure, but that's going to take a while. The internet's there, sure, but not uh, not always. <laughs> if I'm going to be honest with you, the way things are going in the news right now may not be around for much longer at all. To be honest with you, but. Community radio is always there. You could put a loop, you could have a 15 minute loop that plays over and over again, or you could have a show in the afternoons where you talk about this, where people call in and, and do this. And I know this sounds crazy, but this is exactly what I used to do in the 90s, man. In the area that I lived, we actually had live call-in shows every Friday night from nine o'clock till you know midnight. And people would call. We would call out, people would call in. It was great, and we had a lot of listeners. We built up those listeners by putting out flyers and mailboxes around the neighborhood, letting people know that the radio station existed. During the daytime hours, we played mostly music, and during the afternoon hours, we played mostly talk radio, and during the evening, eh, it was anything goes, and it works. So you could do the same thing in your neighborhood. You could get out information about what's going on in town. Maybe you guys are setting up some kind of community yard sale. Maybe you're setting up some kind of community gatherings on a weekly basis, and it's a great way to keep in touch. Obviously, with the way that things are going online, this, this molding, this uh, controlling of information, this shaping of conversations, um, this is a great way to kind of bypass all that crap. Honestly, it's just a way to say, you know what, I got my own way of doing this. I, I could invest maybe $150 for a used laptop and a transmitter and a microphone, and I'm, I'm set. I'm good to go. I can literally transmit you know, a mile, two miles, three miles in a best case scenario with this small micro broadcasting setup. And, and I could be out there informing the community and, uh, you know, rebroadcasting material that I felt was important. That, you know, not some billionaire, but me in my community felt was important for you to hear. So that is, uh, that's the first part of this. If you're interested in wanting to know how exactly to go about doing this, the technical side of this, please look at the videos that I've made and, uh, and you'll see you know, how I use an, an ancient single core laptop to, to run an entire radio station. And that's on the internet and over the air. And I can take calls and I can use a microphone and I have a small mixer board. And this whole process, you, know, you can do on the cheap. I'm telling you for $150, 
you can be set up and ready to go. If you want to learn more about this subject or if you're just like totally lost as to where to begin, uh, these are two printed copies of this, but I'm going to leave a link to this site. There's actually like a lot of micro broadcasting, community broadcasting, part 15 broadcasting websites. Not all of them are updated anymore, but they really don't need to be all that updated. You can add your station to a list, which is how uh, people end up finding the Midnight Cafe. They go on there and they see that their Midnight Cafe exists. I reached out to several of these companies and they, and they carry my stations in their little communities, which is awesome. Uh, I think the biggest station we have right now is a 30 watt FM somewhere in Michigan, I think it is. So obviously a 30 watts, not, not a part 15, but you know, still kind of staying out of trouble, I guess. Anyway, I printed these off, but they're going to be in the link. These are two great books you should look into. The first one being this one, you see there, and that is the Low Power AM Broadcaster's Handbook. This is open source, like open, you can, you can modify it, you can add notes to it, you can do whatever you want. But this thing has tons of info. And, and we're talking like you could build your own AM or FM transmitter here. You could build power supplies. You can build SWR meters. It has in calculations for making antennas. If you're looking at AM antennas, you know, you're going to need a loading coil to make that work because you obviously a quarter wavelength is hundreds and hundreds of feet. So there's all kinds of stuff in that. This is uh, last updated officially in 2005, but a lot of this stuff is still available. And at the back of it, um, there's all kinds of links, uh, you know, companies that sell this stuff and, and have parts available, companies that deal in it. Uh, Ramsey, which I think is out of business, but uh, might be the only one on there that's obsolete. The other book that's also on there that's definitely worth a read is a little older, but here it is. You know, it's called the Low Power Radio Broadcasting Handbook, How to Start Your Own Radio Station. And this is geared towards like churches and communities, right? Which, again, if you're running a small church, you know, with all this crazy lockdowns and stuff. A lot of places aren't allowed to have indoor church. My church is gone. It's actually gone. Not only do they not have indoor service, they don't have service at all because they didn't. They weren't able to stay in business. They weren't able to get enough tithing because people just kind of faded away. I'm guilty of that myself, actually. So I, I'm part of the problem, I guess. But you could certainly use this information to broadcast your sermons every every week or twice a week or four times a week or nonstop on a 24 hour seven loop. So you can do that and then the people in your community can hear the words you're trying to spread, right? And this book, being a little older, this one's from 1990. Uh, some of this stuff is a little more dated, but it's really well put out, a little tactical, multiple antenna designs. There's one that's like a coiled antenna. Here's one, they talk about ground rods. It does focus a lot on AM here, but it also talks about shortwave and FM transmissions as well. These two books are free. They're awesome. They're free. If you really want to get into it, if you want to get that Part 15 radio station and you want it to be legal, but you want to get as far out as possible, there are other books that are also available. There's like the big book of antennas, and that is this here, Building Your Own Antennas, the big antenna book, right? Lots of information on, on you know antenna design and all the rest. And there's another one as well that's more towards your AM broadcasting, but that is construction plans for medium frequency transmitting antennas and it's maybe 20 pages of just ideas and measurement calculations so you can build the best setup you can build. <sighs> That's it my friends. I, I am passionate about community radio. I live in a place where honestly community radio is a dud because I am a quarter mile probably from my nearest neighbor and so there's just not a lot of opportunity even at a perfect system right if i get that two miles maybe two and a half miles out i may reach 20 people at most and of those 20 people how many really want to hear what i have to say or what i want to broadcast but that is not the case in most locations right if you're in a subdivision if you're in a small town if you live in a downtown area or in the fringe you know just on the outskirts of a large town you have a pretty large potential to get people listening. So uh, you can play music, you can play your own music, you can play other people's music, you can play your news, you can play other people's news, you can rebroadcast uh, several websites that are no longer really allowed on the internet. Well, I just, you know, have satellite feeds because I have the satellite systems that directly download the, the content live, and I'm able to rebroadcast that here over the air. So there's a lot of opportunity for you to kind of bypass the control that is going on online right now using community radio. I urge you to look into it. It's, it's a passion of mine. It's a hobby of mine. But it's also something that's kind of important 
in our lives right now. This country was founded on the ideas of freedom of speech and freedom of expression. Community radio is a great way to follow those principles. That's it, my friends. I'm Eric, the owner of Farpoint Farms. If you have questions, take a look at the other two videos I made specifically on this, and then also feel free to ask and any question you want in the comment section. I'll do my best to help you out. Take care.